Praise the Lord and welcome to Faith Builders Broadcast. My name is Michelle Steele and it is my privilege to have this time with you today to share the Word of God and to get into some great things that will help us grow and be strong in the Lord. Today we are giving our focus to a specific teaching. We are on part six of our lessons in Teach Me and Lead Me. Teach me, lead me. And we are learning how to follow the Lord, learning how he wants to bring his instruction, his wisdom, his light into our life, learning our part of that and how to follow correctly so that we can be on the path that God has for us at the right place, at the right time, living the life that God has prearranged for us. We need to know how to follow the leading of the Lord. And we're going to get into uh, a greater uh, emphasis of that leading today. But I do want to tell you this eight part series, you don't want to miss any part of it. And so all of it is available at our website, buildfaith.net. You can get it in many different formats. If you want to download the video or the audio, that's available from our website. If you want to get the CDs or the DVDs, we also have a study guide, and I'm really excited about the study guide. This is a study guide from my previous lesson because this new one isn't in in my hands back from the printer yet, but the study guide has all of the points from our lesson, all of the, the teaching points, the scriptures, the different translations that we've used in the teaching, as well as questions for study and reflection at the end of every lesson. So all eight lessons with questions, a great tool, a great resource for you to use in your own personal private time of study, or you could have a Bible study. You can even get the PDF download of this book, of the study guide, and, and use it on your tablet. All of those things are available at buildfaith.net. And of course, the videos are free of charge to watch again and again and again at our YouTube channel, which you can link to through buildfaith.net and find us there. Another resource that's going to help you in this same vein is the book that I've written called Finding God's Answers. I wrote this book as a result of a time of study uh, when God was teaching me about how to identify the things he wanted to impress upon me or lead me in or guide me in, how to identify those things that aren't necessarily in the scripture because there are some specific decisions that we make that we may not have an outlined, clear, concise scripture to give us the understanding of which decision that we make, but God still provides help for us through revelation. And so finding God's answers, the subtitle is called how to recognize revelation and respond to it correctly. And I know it will help you in learning how to follow the Lord. And another thing that I want to say before we get into today's message, I want to take a moment and I do this each week because this is something uh, very, in, very much in my heart to say thank you to all of you who partner with this ministry. Pastor Steele and I uh, know the value of what you help us do, that we can do so much on our own, but we can do so much more with your help. And so your part of this ministry is a valued part and a, a very dear part to us. And so thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your financial support. Thank you for sowing into this ministry and helping us reach so many more people. I'm grateful to you for being a partner. If you've never partnered with us, I'd love to welcome you to the Faith Builders family. And I encourage you because God has chosen and designed partnership as a means of distributing not only the gospel being preached through the ministry, but then the anointing coming into the lives of those who partner with us and the reward and the recompense. You know, the apostle Paul, he wasn't just talking when he said, I desire that fruit would abound to your account. 
because of the, the fruit that they had made available in his ministry by their sowing in Philippians, the church at Philippi, they, he wanted to see fruit abounding in their account. And that's what Pastor Steele and I desire as well. And that's what God desires. And he in, in, included in the design of partnership, not only that you give, but that you receive as well. And it's a spiritual receiving and a recompense that when we sow into the gospel, uh, there is a recompense that cannot be attained any other way. So uh, I encourage you to join partnership with this ministry. And as you do, we have a gift for you. And it's my first book, Pressure No Problem. I want every one of my partners to walk above the pressure, victorious over every pressure, every difficulty, every situation, because God designed you as an overcomer and you can soar above the problem. And I want my partners to have that instrument and that tool. So this is our gift to you. Thank you for being a partner with Faith Builders. Today, we're going to jump right back into our teaching on being led by the Holy Spirit. And I, uh, there is so much information uh, about being led by the Spirit, and we want to lay it as, as, as accurately a foundation for the leading of the Holy Spirit. For this lesson, uh, I, I do want to go back to our, our main teaching in Isaiah, which has been the text that we've started with each service, Isaiah 48 and verse 17, God identifies himself as I am the Lord, your God, which teaches you to profit, which leads you by the way that you should go. God teaches, and with every teaching that comes to him, whether it's a teaching concerning our home life, our finances, our marriage, our, our, our uh, walk with him, prophet is connected to the teaching of God. And God said, I am the Lord who teaches you to profit and I am the Lord who leads you by the way that you should go. There is a way that God has arranged that he has prepared for every one of us. And for us to be on that path, for us to be on that road, we need the leading of the Lord. You won't find it without him. You won't find that road that God has prepared, taken you to the good life without the leading of God. So the leading of the Lord is crucial to our lives. We need the leading of the Lord for every part of our life, for every aspect and every day of our life. And so John chapter 16 identifies something important. You know, in John 14, 15, and 16, Jesus was having a conversation with his disciples. Those three chapters, including if you go on to chapter 17, that's part of the, the, the time uh, but he in 17 deals more with praying to God for his disciples. But in 14, 15, and 16, God, the, Jesus is teaching the disciples some important things that are going to change when he goes to heaven, when he takes his place at the right hand of the Father after fulfilling the plan of God in our redemption on the cross, being raised from the dead, ascending to take his place at the Father. There were some important things that would be different. And one of the things that he identifies, he identifies that they're going to love in the same way he has loved them. He identifies that they are going to pray in his name. That was different. He said, before now, you've asked nothing in my name, but from this point, point on, you'll ask in my name and the father will do it for you. And then he also identifies this in John 16, 13, how that after this redemption is made available, that you will have a relationship with the Holy Spirit in the same way you've had a relationship with me, how I've led you, how you've been my disciple, how I have taught you, the Holy Spirit's going to take my place in teaching you, and he's going to take my place in leading you. Now, we know that everything he teaches, the Holy Spirit teaches, everything the Holy Spirit leads is exactly the will of Jesus. The Holy Spirit is never going to guide us in a way, and Jesus have to come and take over and say, Holy Spirit, why did you do that? He's never going to do that. He, the Holy Spirit is perfectly in line with the will of the Father and the will of Jesus. So we can trust his leading. Verse 13 of John 16 says this, 
How be it when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. He shall not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, meaning whatever he will hear from the father or hear from Jesus, that shall he speak and he will show you things to come. So from this one verse, and there are other instructions that Jesus gave in 14, 15, and 16, but I just want us to look at this. It says, the Holy Spirit will guide us. The Holy Spirit will guide us. And we found out in in our previous teaching that the leading of the Holy Spirit is the inheritance. That's part of the inheritance of the children of God. Those who are sons of God are led by the Spirit of God. And that leading is, uh, is him out in front and we're following behind. And so when we use this here, he will guide us. Again, he's in front. He knows where we need to go. He knows how to get us on that path. We follow him. He's out in front. He's not standing off somewhere giving us a direction from the sidelines. He wants to lead us and guide us. It also says he will speak. In this verse 13, he will not speak of himself, but whatever he shall hear, that shall he speak. So the Holy Spirit will guide us and the Holy Spirit will speak to us. And if you think that's weird, please just open the pages of your Bible and find out that's part of God's help for us. It's not weird to hear God in our heart by his spirit speaking to us specifics for our life. He wants you to hear him. Jesus said this in in John chapter 10. He said, my sheep know my voice. They hear my voice and another voice they will not follow. And so if we are disciples of Christ, if we are his sheep, we know his voice. He speaks to us and he wants this to be an accurate Uh, conversation with him where we hear from him, where we talk to him and we know this is the voice of God that we don't have to say, was that God? Was that me? Was that the enemy trying to tell me? But we know because of our interaction with him and our intimacy with him, that was the Lord speaking to me. It also says he will show us things. So that means you're going to see things that come to you, not by your eyes, not by, not, not by teaching in your ears. There are plenty that God teaches us. He uses teaching, but there are some things he's going to show us. And it may be while you're reading the word, but you see it in your heart. It may be while you're hearing a sermon, but you see something that maybe that minister didn't say. I've had that happen to me many times that the Holy Spirit was using that moment and using that thought to direct me to something. And he showed me something that the minister didn't say, but the Holy Spirit said it right in my heart. And I understood. So he will show us things. And it says here, he will show us things to come. And then it goes on to say he will glorify Jesus by showing us the things of the Lord. That is identified there in verse 14, that he is going to take what belongs to Jesus. He's going to show it to us and he is going to glorify God in that. Amen. That's how God's going to get glory by you seeing what belongs to you in Christ, by you seeing the plan of God for your life, by you receiving directly from him, you're going to walk in a way that brings glory to God. So we need this activity of the Holy Spirit in our life. We are not going to be accurate in our walk of faith, our walk with God without the help of the Spirit of God. And Jesus, he gave us an example. He showed us how to operate in this earth with the help of the Holy Spirit. And this is our pattern. You can go back with to, to Luke chapter four, and we looked at it yesterday, or we looked at it in last week's session, but I want to look at it again uh, in this week's session from the Weiss translation, W-U-E-S-T, Luke 4, 1, and Jesus in the control of, of the Holy Spirit returned from the Jordan and was continually being led by the Holy Spirit. He was in the control of the Holy Spirit and that didn't mean that the Holy Spirit 
possessed him and forced him to do anything, like dominated him, but he, he put himself in a position where I'm following your lead, I want you to direct me and, and control the decisions and the directions. It says, in the control of the Holy Spirit. That is one of the most accurate translations of that verse in Luke 4, 1. Jesus, in the control of the Holy Spirit. That's the pattern for you. That's the pattern for me. We are to live our lives in the control of the Holy Spirit, continually being led by the Holy Spirit. And this is not just for people in ministry. This is not just for people who are standing behind a pulpit preaching the gospel. This is for every believer. We are to live our lives in the control of the Spirit of God, being led by the Spirit of God. And we see this clearly in, uh, as an instruction to the New Testament believer in Galatians 5 and verse 16. And I want to read this from the Amplified. Galatians 5, 16. But I say, walk and live in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Walk and live responsive to, controlled, and guided by the Spirit. And then the verse continues saying, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh of the human nature without God. So you won't satisfy the flesh impulses or the flesh temptations. Why? Because I am controlled by, I am yielded to, I am responsive to, I am guided by the Spirit of God. I'm not guided by what my flesh is feeling. I'm not guided by what my flesh is desiring. My flesh might want to follow my husband and get the last word in, but I'm not going to do it because I'm led by the Spirit of God who tells me to walk in love and to, to have a soft answer that turns away wrath. My flesh might want to holler out the window at that person who cut me off on the interstate. Uh, it might want me to put my hand on that horn and honk it really loud and say, who gave you a driver's license? And, uh, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Why? Because I'm controlled by and I'm guided by the Holy Spirit. Spirit, and I'm going to say, Lord, bless them. Thank you for protecting me from their driving, but bless them, Lord. <laughs> and this is our lifestyle. He wants us to be responsive to the Holy Spirit and guided by the Holy Spirit. And if we do, if we live that way, led by the Spirit of God, we won't be led by the desires of our flesh. We won't have to deal with a lot of fallout from flesh fits or bad hair days or hump winds days or, or you know, uh, giving in to uh, eating a whole carton of ice cream in my yoga pants. No, I don't have to give in to any of that or have to deal with the repercussions of those because instead of having those flesh fits and eating the whole uh, carton of, of ice cream, I'm going to walk in the Spirit and I'm going to be led by the Spirit of God and I won't fulfill that temptation of my flesh. Amen. I just helped somebody. You're welcome. As we look in this from our position as children of God, sons of God, we see that this is our inheritance. And I mentioned that before, but I want to go back to Romans and, and we're going to read 12, 13, and 14 this time. In Romans 8, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. Who are we in debt to? We, we, if you we use that phrase that Romans is using here, I owe Jesus everything, right? He doesn't, he hasn't held a note over me to say, hey, you owe me, but I know he paid it all. I know Jesus is the one who deserves my serving him, not my flesh. So I don't owe my flesh anything. My flesh can demand that I act a certain way, but I don't have to give in to its demands because I don't owe my flesh anything. I don't owe my flesh a bad hair day. I don't owe my flesh a fit. I don't owe it to have, uh, you know, seconds on chocolate cake. I don't owe it. it it's going to make demands on me. It's going to demand that I hit that snooze button, but I don't owe my, my flesh 
that hitting of the snooze button. And I'm using some natural examples, and there are certainly more serious examples of things the flesh wants to lead us into, watching things and in, in, involved in things uh, uh, that are destructive. But, uh, it, 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 whether it's something dramatic or something that seems insignificant, every time I yield to my flesh, whether it's hitting the snooze button or watching something nasty, if I, and I don't, but if any person submits in any way, it gives momentum to the flesh. It, it strengthens the flesh. And so I don't owe my flesh. It says we are not debtors to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you will die. But if you through the spirit, notice why we need to be controlled by the spirit, guided by the spirit, responsive to the spirit. He said, if you through the spirit, through following the spirit of God, mortify the deeds of the body, you will live. So I need the help of the Holy Spirit to overcome the temptations of my flesh. If I live controlled by and guided by the Spirit of God, I'm not controlled by the cravings and desires of my flesh. And I will put them to death and I will live unto God. And then it says this in verse 14 that we read from last week's lesson. For as many as are led... By the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Sons of God, daughters of God, children of God are led by the Spirit. This is your right. This is your inheritance. You and I are intended to be followers of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. So we know the benefit then of what we avoid and what we receive by following the leading of the Holy Spirit. So our part is to learn, remember, and our part is to follow. And so we've got to learn how he communicates and follow that communication. And in this same chapter, Romans 8, verse 16, it goes on to say, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit bears witness with our spirit. The Amplified we used in last week's teaching, it said he testifies together with our spirit. And this is, this is the most um, valued communication a new believer, a, a, a New Testament believer can be proficient in. This is God's choice. If he wants to, uh, if he wants to communicate with you, identify things in your life, this is the one that he chooses to use. If you were to say, God, what's your best way of communicating to me? What's your preferred method of communicating with me? He would take you to Romans 8, 16 and say, my desire is to testify to your spirit. And because in Romans 8, 16, notice what it said, he bears witness he testifies together with our spirit, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's the most important thing you'll ever need to learn, that you're a child of God, to be convinced, to be sure, and to be stable in the knowledge that you are a child of God. And he has taken something that's the most important element of, of, of your relationship, and he is using the inner witness the bearing testimony together with your spirit to bring it across to you, to solidify that. And if he'll use that, then that if in, in one thing that's the most important in our walk with him, how much more is he going to use it in other aspects of our life? So this is God's number one choice for communication, the inward witness. And I'll tell you why. Because the enemy can't manipulate it. He can't duplicate it and he can't interrupt it. If you don't open your mouth and tell what God is speaking to you, the, nobody will know. The devil won't know what God is speaking. God can speak things directly into your spirit and you can know and it put you out ahead of the attack of the enemy. So don't wait for something more dramatic. Don't demand of God an, angel, an angelic visitation or that someone give you a word of knowledge. Don't demand of God that you see something in a dream because those supernatural things are, are often uh, people mistake the spectacular for something supernatural. Sometimes that supernatural, the, the inward witness is one of the most supernatural interactions with God because it's him speaking directly to you.
Amen? So don't wait for something more dramatic, but become developed in immediately acting on the witness. When you know God's speaking to your spirit, when he's prompting you to do something, don't take counsel with your mind and pull it up here and reason your way through it. And that, that, that is a, a, an important part of, uh, of becoming skilled. We need to be so skilled. We need to be so proficient in the leading of the Spirit that we are confident when God speaks to us and we're so confident that we will respond immediately to His prompting, that we don't need any more things to uh, uh, convince us. We don't need anything outward to convince us, but we can walk strictly by what God is dealing with us in our spirit. And peace, we talked about peace in last week. Peace is a major component. God's going to give you a green light. He's going to use peace. You will be led forth with peace. Peace will act as an umpire saying it's safe or saying, no, get that thing out of here. And that's what we want to become skilled in is this leading of the Lord. We're going to have more on this subject in next week's lesson. So make sure that you turn, tune in to all of these episodes or go to our website, buildfaith.net and access them in their entirety. Thanks for tuning in. God desires that every believer would walk in His wisdom and follow the paths He has prepared for them. He offers to teach us His wisdom and lead us by His Spirit. Our part is to be willing to learn God's ways and follow His Spirit. This series, Teach Me and Lead Me, is exactly what you need to help identify and cooperate with the Spirit of God. In this series, Michelle still explains the value we need to place on God's wisdom, how God leads us through instructions, how to know the voice of God's Spirit, the way that God prefers to communicate with us, and much more. This insightful eight-part series is available in digital or physical formats starting at just $20. In addition, we are offering Michelle's companion book, Finding God's Answers, How to Recognize Revelation and Respond Correctly. In this book, Michelle teaches that every believer is equipped with the ability to hear from God. The word revelation means to remove the cover. As a person learns to live from their spirit, God will be able to reveal details about the decisions they need to make and the direction of their life. If you desire to be spiritually accurate and live in line with God's plan, this book is for you. This essential book that teaches how to recognize revelation and respond correctly can be yours for just $14.99. Don't miss this special offer, the eight-part series Teach Me, Lead Me, and the companion book Finding God's Answers work together to help you gain skill in hearing from God. Call the number on your screen now or go to buildfaith.net to order. Call or go online now. We want to say thank you for watching Faith Builders and would like to invite you to become a partner with this ministry. With your partnership, you help make it possible for the Word of God to be spread across the world. You can call us at 1-586-5080 or visit us online at buildfaith.net. You can also write us at P.O. Box 242-692, Little Rock, Arkansas 72223. Together we are building people's faith and framing their world by the Word of God.